Okay, guys, so now we're going to take a look at the matchup here. Um, this is the Simic Aggro deck. Uh, we're, we're facing, this is going to be mono blue control. So, opening hand, pretty good. Um, you know, it's it's not fantastic, but it, it could be worse. Um, you have the ability, you know, you won't be able to necessarily get the turn to Coiling Oracle because of this. Uh, you would need a lucky draw, but you still could get that out pretty early. Um, you know, we have the turn one. Um, Island into Vapor Snag if you want to bounce back a, a Delver of Secrets on the first turn. Um, my opponent's going to start out with a Probe, going to see my hand, and as always, make sure you are aware of where he left off on your hand, so you know that anything I draw after Vapor Snag, he is aware of it being in my hand. Um, now, this matchup, let me talk about this real quick. Uh, up it's a pretty good matchup. Um, this is really one of the main focuses for the Stormbound Geist, um, one of the reasons I brought it in here. Uh, there's a lot of counter spell spells and stuff, but it will give you at least um, an out for your stitched Drake. Um, they don't have any other kill spells, so you know it's it's one of those places where the only way you're going to get a creature for the Drake into your graveyard is going to be through counter spells. Uh, you want to be very aware of your opponent's mana, his hand size, um, and just do your best to play smart around those counter spells. Um, we'll talk about sideboarding after this, but you see, I did not draw into excuse me, the additional forest that I needed for this Coiling Oracle, so I'm going to have to just place him at Growth Chamber um, and wait until next turn. Now I'm at a point, if I draw a forest, I could play the Centaur, which is, you know, good with the flanking. It's, um, it definitely makes things, you know, it, it's it's very hard to overcome, especially in this matchup. Um, Mono Blue doesn't have a lot of stuff that uh, will survive that um, and, you know, trade with it to be more important. Um, I do also have the option, if I do not get a land, I will be able to get this Geist into play especially if my opponent taps out, um, which he does, you know, I feel good, but it is a Cloud of Fairies, he does have um, cards in hand, he plays a Brainstorm, um, so you know, you think he has a, a counter spell. him playing Brainstorm is great for me, that if he leaves one mana open, it means his card is Force Spike, um, and then I can play Coiling Oracle to get around it. Um, even better, he plays a Preordain, now he is completely tapped out, and I am able to make a free play on the next turn. So you did not draw a, another land, so I have to play my island, and I'm going to be able to get that Geist into play. Um, this is where I, I said it, you know, this was kind of the, the main focus for putting these Storm Geists into the deck. You know, I, I am overly in love with this creature, I will admit, um, and I, I really wanted to find a spot for it, and I think it, it works out nicely in this deck, um, and definitely nicely in this matchup. Now my opponent is um, unable to attack through on this. Uh, and it, it's just going to cause him issues. Um, he can chump block it, but he really needs a, a Spire Golem or a Stitched Drake of his own to do something with this. Um, so he plays land number three, passes the turn. I am you know, aware at this point he has six cards in hand. Um, do not get another land, and do not have any creatures in the graveyard to play Stitched Drake. Um, so I'm going to be able to, you know, Coiling Oracle, I could get into play. I am going to do Vapor Snag possibly draw out a counter spell. Um, if he's smart, he's not going to use one. Um, all it does for me, it, it kind of takes a life off and allows me to attack through with the um, the Geist. And I still have an opportunity to play Coiling Oracle if I want to and try and draw out a counter spell. Um, it's kind of an interesting creature card. Uh, I know my opponent hesitated here and other places on whether or not he wanted to counter spell the Coiling Oracle. Um, you know, it's 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 a one-one, so you're kind of hesitant to counter it, but at the same time, it does provide you with card advantage and mana advantage. Um, you see, I do hit into uh, a forest here. So let's pop open my opponent's graveyard real quick. You see, he did cycle off the cloud of fairies, um, trying to draw into something like Spire Golem, I imagine, to give him an edge. Um, it's land number four, and does you see get the Spire Golem? And now I'm not too afraid of that. Um, I can attack into it with the Geist. If he decides to block it, uh, the Geist has the Undying ability and will come back as a 3-3. And then these two are basically going to cancel each other out for now. Um, I, I also have four mana open. I have the availability to play either the Arrows or the Zephylid or even the Elder to kill this. Um, I'm going to kind of hold on to the Elder and play these first. Uh, even the centaur I can play first, and just try and draw out those counter spells. My opponent has two land open, he's playing mono blue control, and that's really the, the key here, is drawing out counter spells. And you see, this is successful. Um, Serrated Arrows would have, you know, balanced this matchup. It's one of those cards that if he did not have the counter spell, um, it would have put me in a good position with an undead, um, 
Stormbound Geist, which would be a 3-3. I could make my opponent's Golem a 1-3, and then it's uh, put me in, in the dominant position in that matchup. Um, but I am still going to be able to attack into this, uh, leave it back to block. Either way, it's going to be able to get that undying ability. Um, I think I, I honestly think I should have attacked there. Uh, my opponent would have blocked. Um, but, you know, here he's going to decide to attack anyways. It, it really doesn't matter how we want to do it. Um, I usually like to, to be the aggressor in most cases, however. So my opponent drawing cards, getting his land, um, gets a second Spire Golem, and this is a little more troublesome. I do have the, the Zeppelin I can get into play, um, and I have the, the Elder as well. Uh, now he comes down with the Delver of Secrets, again, Flyers. That's kind of why I wanted to focus on that with this deck um, for matchups like this. You know, there's been kind of a rampage of heavy mono blue um, recently that, you know, I wanted to, when I was building this deck, match up against. Though I, I will say now, looking over the past couple of days, there has been an insurgence of the, the mono green aggro. So all of a sudden these um, geists are not so great. Uh, something that, that you want to look to, to sideboard out against those matchups. Um, even against, like, goblins and mono white, this becomes a, a weaker creature, and I, I'm, I'm torn on it. It's such a love-hate thing uh, going on with that creature right now. So I'm going to attempt to put out the Zeppelid, do draw another counter spell, which is great. Now I'm, you know, he's down to two cards in hand. I'm assuming that I'm going to be able to get the Wicker um, Bow Elder into play on my next attempt. Um, like I said, the, the Geist cancels things out. If he flips the Delver, uh, those will trade. But right now, it's going to be able to chump block both Golem, or chump block either Golem. Sorry. Uh, can't double block. You know, he will attack through, I will block one. Take a little bit of damage. Um, you know, I, I am at 20. He does actually sli uh, slip in a ninja, so he's going to be able to draw cards off that, and he's really trying to rebuild his hand at this point. Uh, he was down to two cards, and I knew one of them was a Spire Golem. Uh, that's not a good position for, for Mono Blue to Control to be in. They really want to draw the cards to get an advantage. Um, Bear comes down, again, remembering the Golem was there. He plays the Golem and has still one card in hand um, with three lands open. So, you know, at this point in time, uh, I'm pretty much assuming that it is not a counter spell, so I, I probably should have played this forest first, just because it's the safer thing to do. Um, but anyways, I'm going to play the elder. He does not have a counter spell, and now I can use it to kill off one of the golems directly. Um, kind of a great advantage of this card. Um, something you may not think of right away is as an you know a plus side for the elder, but that is one way it has a you know a good stance in this matchup. Um, you know, it's it's a great thing to have main deck against the affinity matchup, but it also works really well in this instance. Um, it works really well against the posts, getting rid of prisms. Uh, it's something that that I definitely underestimated in in um, you know in general. So opponent draws. He's now at two. Uh, he's probably not going to attack you. Assume at this point he wants to draw cards off this ninja, but um, with the elder in place, it's going to just chump block. Uh, so he does pass the turn. Um, you see also with the counter spells that I, I was talking about, that is the opportunity you have to get this stitched drake into play. Um, sorry, I, I kind of stumble over that, so I, I make sure that I pronounce it right every turn. Um, he has one card in hand. I am going to play the drake. If it is not counter spelled, then I, I can play the centaur and be pretty safe that it's going to get into play. Um, the drake is definitely his bigger threat, so by seeing that he is not going to counter spell it, I can get this uh, centaur going. Um, I did attack, you see there, with the Elder. Uh, I kind of forced him to trade the two bears. That was kind of what I was going for. Um, anything that he would have blocked with it would have killed something off. Uh, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to thin out his creature base. Mono Blue Control is not very heavy on the creatures, so anytime you can thin out his creatures, you're putting yourself in an advantage. Um, especially because, you know, our deck is so creature heavy. Um, so now, kind of a, an odd move on my part. You know, I, I may have have done this differently in hindsight, but I attack with both of the, the flyers. He can only block one of them, so I am getting some damage through on the stack. Um, draw rune snag, not great to get one of those in the mid to late game like this, um, because, you know, he's at a point in time where he's got six mana, and it's hard to, to get that countered for two. Um, so he does finally get his Delver to flip, uh, reveals a daze, and I keep this open at all times, just so I'm aware that he still has that daze in hand. Um, now he's going to be able to attack through and hit me for 5 in the air, um, and that's going to be dangerous. And he actually, he does something else weird here, he attacks with this ninja, um, 
I do have a blocker with the centaur to stop that, so I, I will make that trade. Of course, I don't want him drawing cards, but then he, you know, with three cards in hand, he manages to ninja in two additional ninjas of the deep hour. Uh, so that sucks. He is going to draw two cards. I know that he has the Spire Golem, which can come down for free because of how many lands he has, and he will be able to play the um, Delver. But this also puts me at a good spot. Um, here comes the Spire Golem. Let's bring out the next point. Um, when he plays this Delver, and there's no reason for him really not to, um, I have this is game one. I have not played a single counter spell. He is not necessarily aware that I am even running counter spells, um, so he's going to attempt to play this. Now he's got three cards in hand, one mana open. Um, with one mana, all he can play is four spike, and that only takes one to um, stop it from countering. His other card in hand is days, as we see here, and that is only going to um, be prevented when I pay one. So this puts me at a good spot, you know, this rune snag, which was not great, all of a sudden becomes useful again, because he tapped out four land to play those double ninjas, um, and I can keep this delver off the table. Now we come up on another Stormbound. Um, again, he's got days. I don't know what his other two cards are, but the days does not work when I have so much ma mana open. Um, kind of puts me at a good point in this deck, um, you know, in the mid game like this, when I can get around the, the blue decks. They're all different, but a lot of them do run for Spike or Days, um, and, and being able to have mana open, even Mana Leak requires three, and having this much mana open, it, it puts me in a good position to stop that. Um, he's going to need just a, a hard counter spell to stop that. Um, leave my creatures back so that he cannot really attack through with these two ninjas. Um, you know, I, I don't want him drawing cards at this point in the game. Um, I, you know, with the other guys, it's great, because again, I can attack into the Spire Golem, um, or block the Spire Golem and flip it. Um, I mean, you know, give it undying and bring it back from the dead. So, he's sitting at five cards, he's not making any plays. Um, I know one of them is a daze, I'm starting to believe that he's holding on to land. Um, a lot of times I have found that mono blue players will sit at six land and not drop anything additionally. Uh, he does actually cycle a cloud of fairies. Um, definitely a good move in the late game. They don't want to really play it, especially when I have these three flyers out. It's not going to get him anywhere. So he passes the turn. We're going to kind of go back and forth like this for a little while. Um, attempt to play a Wayfinder, get more land out. Um, you know, at this point in the game, again, just thinning out the lands that I have in deck. Um, and I am going to, you see, finally decide to attack with this Stormgeist so that it comes back. Um, and now I have three uh, flyers in the air with three attack power. So Preordain comes down, um, he's sitting at five cards in hand, uh, Sandbar going to cycle it, Oracle is going to be played, um, and that reveals to me a Blastoderm. Um, now this is where I'm going to tap out. Uh, I've been holding this land as kind of a bluff, so I am going to leave these two islands open. He has seen that I have Rune Snag, so I want him to believe that it's, it's a counter spell. Um, I don't care what anyone says, there's bluffing that goes along with this game. So now he concedes. Uh, kind of an interesting point, I, I didn't think it was necessarily a time to do so. Uh, over the next few turns I would have been able to swing through with the 5-5 five, five, um, Blastoderm and he would have been in a bad spot. Um, he would have had three opportunities to chump block it, but apparently did not have, in these five cards in hand, a counter spell. Um, even a, a mana leak would have stopped it, but you know, I guess all he had was days, so he has to concede out that game. Um, you know, between the Blastoderm, and then I would have been able to attack through with these three, and he would have only been able to chump block it, um, and, you know, I still would have had available to... Um, I'm sorry, he would have been able to chump block one, so I still would have gotten six through on that, um, which puts me in a good spot, and I still would have been able to block both ninjas, um, even trade both ninjas because I had double coiling oracle as well. So let's go real quick. We are here. And this is the second game. Um, there are actually not a lot of sideboard options. I was a little surprised we came to sideboarding and I'm looking at it. There really isn't anything you want to do with um, the current sideboard that I'm running. Um, you may feel free to change that. I, I may change it at some point, but there's not really anything that I, I feel would be a, a good addition. You could bring in stuff like negate and dispel, but um, you know, as it sits currently, we're just going to leave it as is um, for the sake of discussion. There is nothing from the sideboard that can be brought in, and you just have to kind of play it out the same way. So, probe on turn one into turn one Delver. There really is not a better play for Mono Blue. Um, there is something profoundly satisfying about a turn one Delver. Um, 
turn one there, I was hoping to get an island so I could use Vapor Snag and prevent the flipping of Delver. Um, facing down that 3-2 flyer on turn 2 is brutal. Um, but at least it is a blue mana source uh, that I can get this Oracle in play and bounce it later when I get a Simic um, chamber. So he actually doesn't flip it. He gets some, some pretty bad luck I, I found um, in this matchup where he does not get a lot of early flips on these Delvers. I am going to attempt to play Oracle, and after hesitation, he does decide to counterspell that. Um, you know, again, an interesting point. It's just a 1-1, one, one, and you feel like... You know, I'm okay with him counterspelling it. It does give me acceleration, um, which is, you know, fantastic, but if it wants to eat a counterspell, especially a hard counter, um, it, it's just, it's fantastic. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, it is a, definitely a tough thing on his part to decide whether or not to do that, because it, you know, it is just a 1-1 one, one creature. Um, but it does allow him now to attack through with this Delver. Um, have Evolving Wild, sorry, drew a, a Zeppelid, um, did not get the third island that I wanted to be able to play the Stormbound Geist, so I'm going to just be able to put down the Evolving Wilds and find that land, um, and leave myself mana open for Vapor Snag and Mana Leak. Now, if he does get this uh, Delver turned, I want to be able to use the Vapor Snag on it. He's probably going to counterspell it, but it's going to put me in a pretty good position. It just eats up yet another counterspell, um, and that's kind of my goal throughout this. But you see, he does not flip it again. Um, definitely, definitely not good luck on my opponent's part. Um, you know, I'm very happy to see it, but um, I did have a lot of options. It's not like, you know, I, I'm only in a, a good spot here because he's gotten bad draws. Um, he uh, he doesn't get it flipped, like I said. If he did, I would have been able to put down the, the Vapor Snag um, to try and bounce it. That that would have eaten a counter spell. He's only at four cards in hand. That's not a good position for him. He's not getting draw spells off. Um, I draw into a Blastoderm, and I know he's going to be looking to counterspell these, so I am going to play the Stormbound Geist, which will be able to trade with the Delver, and even better, it's going to come back. So it's going to be able to kill the Delver and then get a plus one, plus one counter for doing so. Um, it's something he's going to want to counter, which he does not. So sitting at four cards in hand, um, that, that gives me a pretty good feeling about the situation of this game. Um, you know, it's, it's something I wanted to eat the counterspell, if um, if it did, then I would have been a little more free to play Blastoderm, especially you know depending on his plays. Uh, I really wished that I had this one land as an island, so I still had the option to Vapor Snag. But you know you take what you get. So he's going to attack through. I am going to um, not be able to block it because of the uh, stipulation on the Stormbound Geist, um, and he taps out now to play Serrated Arrows, and this is a good opportunity for me because he is tapped out. Um, to, you know, get some plays off. Uh, the, it's also kind of an interesting thing. Um, if he, you know, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just a complicated inter interaction between the Stormbound Geist and the Serrated Arrows. Um, because if the Geist dies, it comes back, and because the arrows give it minus one counters, it's not going to have that plus one, plus one counter. Um, you know, if if this died and came back as a 3-3, three, three, and he used Serrated Arrows on it as a 3-3, three, three, then it can use the Undying again. Um, so it's it's definitely a complicated interaction and not necessarily a, a good target for Serrated Arrows. Um, so my opponent's tapped out. His only option to counterspell at this point in time is Daze, um, which will only require one um, to pay off. And because of that, I, you know, I want to play... Um, you know, perhaps a misstep here. I wanted to play the Centaur. Um, I probably should have played the Blastoderm instead, uh, since he would not have been able to counterspell at this point in time. My thought here was being able to put the, counter the Centaur into play and leave myself mana available for Mana Leak and Vapor Snag. Um, again, I, I feel the better choice there, you know, in hindsight, would have been to play this Blastoderm. Because it has Shroud, it would have been unaffected by the arrows, um, and it's something big that he would not be able to deal with. Um, you know, he would have had to perhaps chump block with the Delver. You know, it's just, it, it puts him all really on the ropes had I played this Blastoderm um, when I could have. Like I said, his only counter spell option there would have been Daze, and I did have, I would have had a, a mana source available to pay that one to stop it. So he misses the flip yet again. Um, now I can attack through with the Centaur, and he will not be able to block without just losing the Delver of Secrets. Now he has um, five cards in hand. All four lands are untapped. Uh, now it is not necessarily a good time to play the Blastoderm. Now I need to try and draw counter spells again. 
Um, so I have choices. I could play the Zeppelin, um, or I could play the Wayfinder and keep mana open for counter spells of my own. So what I am going to do is play the Wayfinder, um, assuming that he was going to counter spell, and then I could mana leak when he's stuck at two lands. Um, he does not actually counter spell, so I am e able to ramp up my mana a little bit more. Close that out of there, and um, you know he's he's going to start taking uh, life away from the Wayfinder. Uh, the serrated arrows are not great against this deck. You know this does have the advantage of running um, the the uh, full sets of the centaur and the blaster derm, um, which allow me to bypass the serrated arrows um, thanks to their their shroud ability. So he finally gets the probe, is able to flip the um, the delver, which uh, puts him at, at an opportunity to go on the offensive, um, but it's still going to trade with the geist, and the geist will live. So uh, it's going to, you know, put him in a bad spot, really. Um, probe comes down. He's going to see this hand. Um, and does decide to concede. Now, again, I think this is an interesting point to concede. Um, I, I'm really not sure this game was lost. He still had one counter on his arrows. He had the, um, the Delver. Uh, God only knows he had six cards in hand. Um, I don't know if he had land and he was trying to bluff. He does see that I have a Blastoderm and a Counterspell. I guess just based on the, the game status as he saw it, he decided that this game was over. Um, but again, you know, talking about this matchup real quick, I think it's a pretty good one. You have the, the Geists, and this is kind of the focus. The reason they were brought into this deck was for kind of this matchup. Um, you know, it'll stop down the, the Cloud of Fairies. It stops down the Flipped Delver. It stops down uh, Stitched Drake. Um, even temporarily, you know, it, the Drake will kill it, but it, it will also put a stop on the Spire Golems. Um, you get the, the Blastoderm and the Centaur, those are good. Um, because they have Shroud, Mono Blue does not have a lot of options for dealing with those. Uh, they have Serrated Arrows and Vapor Snag are their only options for creature control. So because this deck is so heavy, it is an aggro deck, it does kind of give you that advantage. Um, the best thing to do, like I said, there aren't really any sideboard options in this current list, but definitely, you know, play around your opponent's counter spells. Um, always assume that he has him in hand and just play smart and that's going to be the best thing you can do in this matchup.